market that's thirsting for yield, could this be the moment to circle back to B&G Foods, BGS for you home gamers? B&G is the house of brands you probably recognize as cream of wheat, Ortega, Polliner, Vermont Made, B&M Beans, the eponymous B&G Pickles, Pirates Booty, and many, many more. It's a slow and steady food company, bountiful dividend that yields 4.4% at these levels. At a time when investors are snapping up Greek bonds that yield nearly 3.5%, and they're loving the Portuguese tenure, B&G dividend seems downright divine to me. Historically, this company has a track record of buying neglected brands and then breathing new life into them. Most recently, they snapped up specialty brands in the market for $155 million earlier this month. We've got to find out more about that because you may not know those brands. However, as much as I like the dividend and the company strategy, the truth is the business has been not so hot lately. Stock was roughly flat over the last year for a couple of missed quarters. Now, B&G just reported again back on April 16th, and while the company delivered a four-cent miss off of a 38-cent basis with lower-than-expected revenues that still increased by 15.7% year-over-year, there were some bright spots, particularly when management noted that their volumes have improved thus far in April, which suggests the business could be turning in the downturn might have been the weather. And if that's the case, then B&G's dividend could be terrific, just too terrific to ignore. So let's check in with David Wenner, the president and CEO of B&G Foods, find out more about the quarter and where his company is headed. Mr. Wenner, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, David. Now, David, I got to tell you, so glad to see you on the good days and the bad days because you, you know, yep. one thing I love about you is you did, you said something that people don't say in their conference calls. You said the results were disappointing. You were not happy with what you delivered. That's that's exactly right. You know, we try to be very forthright on a conference call. You know, when you do well, you do well. When you do poorly, you say so and you explain why and why you hope to do better in the future. But you did make it clear that my, while you said several times, look, the law sales aren't coming back, at least the trajectory coming out as the weather got better was improving. Well, there were actually two big factors in the volume. The first was Easter moved way late into April. Those sales have come back. And in fact, through three weeks in April, about 75% of the lost volume in the fourth quarter came back. The other part of the volume that isn't coming back is all the volume due to storms. I mean, especially in our food service business, we saw that restaurant traffic down uh, and our sales were down commensurately. Right. People don't understand. Many years are, you do direct to supplier to restaurant. And if, right. they didn't, if the restaurants were closed for bad weather, you didn't sell anything. Our business. sales to those guys are a great barometer right. of how their business is doing. Now, I, as, a, as both a supporter and a critic, I look at your company and I think, wow, I love all these new businesses. They are doing so. Pirates Booty, Rickland, True North, and I also want to talk about Bear Creek. But your base business that I liked so much, the cream of weed, Ortega, they are just not doing that well. Are there some things that maybe, now that you got some new good guys, maybe it's time to let go? Well, actually, the, the brands that we would let go are the really smaller brands, that, okay. uh, some of which are eroding a little bit and are very strong in the Northeast where the supermarket customers are having their problems. Right. That's, that's where the volume issues okay. are. I would never let go of Ortega unless somebody made me some outrageous okay, offer. Fair enough. Uh, it's a great brand. We've grown it tremendously over the years. We've done a lot of innovation around it. Cream of Wheat's a good, solid, profitable brand. We've had trouble growing that brand much mm -hmm. beyond what it was when we bought it. But it still yields. We bought it, it yielded 50 cents on the dollar, and it's right. still doing that. Right. There's nothing wrong with a brand like that. Now, I couldn't dis dis discern among the analyst community and you whether you feel like that, some, that maybe you strayed too far into snacks. Well, we did take a foray into right. snacks, but that was opportunistic to some okay. degree simply because we saw some great buys okay. in snacks. In fact, if you look at the portfolio, we've paid eight to eight and a half times for the purchases that we did, some higher, some lower. Mm -hmm. So it's been an economical buy, and it's a, it's a buy into an area where we see, when you want to talk about growth in the food business, growth is in snacks, not in the main, mainstream right. grocery products, if you will. And so to the extent you care about growth in our context, we wanted to participate in that part of the business as well. Okay, this last big acquisition is big. It made me feel like that, well, maybe I got to tell people to be careful because I know you don't like that much debt. To buy at Bear Creek, should you be issuing equity here? Uh, that's a possibility right. down the road. We don't think we've gotten full realization of the value of making the purchase that we made. I mean, we bought this thing at about seven and a half times EBITDA. Our valuation is close to 13 times EBITDA. You know, so it's a very accretive acquisition right out of the box. We love this brand because it's a it's a nice niche player in the soup business, really has a, that part of the category pretty much to itself. And the management team's done a great job with it in terms of making it a very profitable business. You're making 
We, our guidance on this was 85 million in sales, 20 million in EBITDA. Those are great margins. Well, it, to listen to that makes me feel like that people who are at all concerned with the downturn, that the dividend is in trouble, just just not oh my true at all. You have it, tons no, of coverage. That's they're by far they should not be concerned about the dividend. This, what really needs to be understood about our company is it's a cash flow machine. Right. You know, we turn a great deal of the EBITDA into free cash flow, and we send about 60 percent of that free cash flow out as dividends. So there's a big cushion in terms of the free cash flow left over in the business. And, and we've, we've tried to be very consistent in terms of as we do accretive deals, keep on increasing that dividend, keep that return on to the shareholders uh, consistent. Well, that's why I'm sticking by it. I just think it's, look, this is what people need in this market. And I think that had, had you not had bad weather, I think your stock would be like some of the crazy stocks I see. And I'm not talking about the 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 software as a service. I mean the consumer product goods companies that aren't doing as well as you that are keep going higher. And I think right. yours will too. Thank you so much for coming on. Yep, I really appreciate you. it. Okay, that's David Wetter, President and CEO of B&G Foods. When he, he's on when it's great. He's on when it's not so great. But the consistency of this company is remarkable. And I think it belongs in your portfolio. Stay with me.